Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about work trucks, the do's and don'ts of work trucks, vans, whatever you're running. So if you're in business or you're thinking about getting into business, either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. There is 230 episodes of me saying that exact line in the very beginning, so go back, watch all the episodes. Hopefully they don't suck. Hopefully it's halfway decent and you want to stick around and binge all the episodes you want, man. Or ma'am. Watch everything, listen to everything. It's available anywhere podcasts are, and of course on YouTube. Uh, unfortunately on YouTube you have to look at me, but, but play it in the background, then you don't have to stare at my face. Anyway, uh, if you are on YouTube, you'll see the awesome sticker wall as it's being built, which is pretty rad. So, anyway, um, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, window cleaning resource, so if you need any type of supplies, which I know you do because you're in business, every one of you who's watching needs supplies, right? Let me put your supply order in. It's like the most awesome virtual high five, fist bump, Anything you could think of, any type of order, big or small, it doesn't matter. Let me put it in for you. Just put it in your cart. Even shoot me a text to be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Put it through, man. My number is 862-312-2026. If you're out on the job listening, save that number. Put it in your phone. I'm the only Jersey you know. It's 862-312-2026. Let me put your orders in. It's how I afford my lavish lifestyle of um ring cameras and uh fake wood paneling boom (laughs) Uh, if you are in the industry you're going to love the american window cleaner magazine if you haven't gotten that yet this is a magazine uh that i bought a year ago and um we've made some major changes awesome pictures throwbacks articles and of course the world famous sticker sheet yeah sticker sheet So if you want stickers that are all about window cleaning, which you do because you're going to put them on your buckets and your buckets on a belt and everything, get a subscription. Go to awcmag.com. That is the website, awcmag.com. And subscribe. There's also a sticker club, by the way. If you want just stickers, get the sticker club. Be awesome. Anyway, well, shameless plugs are done for today, and we are going to be talking about uh, the do's and don'ts of work trucks. Now, let me start by saying work trucks and work vans. The difference between a truck and a van is really in what you have available at your disposal. If you're parking inside, like you have a warehouse or shop, look at a truck. Trucks are a little bit more versatile. You have more room. You have kind of more space. Um, you have a little bit more than a van as far as open uh, space. Van, you are you have a, a ceiling, if you will. So you're kind of um, limited there. Uh, but vans are cheaper than trucks usually. Um, you can even get vans in big heavy ones. So if you're carrying water, you can get a one-ton van if you really want. Also, vans are almost always going to be the commercial side because you're getting windowless, you're getting a panel style van. So finding them used is ridiculously cheap uh, compared to trucks. But with a truck, you get a little bit more room, a little bit more versatility. You can put a ladder rack uh, and then keep ladder uh, water fit poles on the ladder rack and strap things to that. It's just whatever you like. It doesn't matter, but they're both great. Nice thing with vans is it's a rolling billboard, literally like rapid it's that's awesome so do what you want as far as what you're looking at a truck or a van uh there's really no difference when it comes to what it is the big thing with a van is you get to lock the entire thing and it's a rolling billboard with a truck you at least have a semi-normal feeling vehicle when you're driving and that makes sense to people who own vans a lot of people who get vans if that's like their main and only vehicle They're like, you know, I'm kind of tired of driving all of my equipment around all the time. They're kind of echoey, you know. There's just a feel to them. But either way, right? Truck or van, doesn't much matter. Uh, If you're watching, tell me what you drive just so I know. But yeah, it's um, it's, uh, one of, what do they say? Half, six of one, half of the other. Yeah, it it just doesn't much matter uh, between the two. 
But no matter which way you go, the first big do that you want to do is wrap it. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean a full wrap because some of you are going, man, that's expensive. It is. But it's also the best return on investment that you can do in the physical besides a website is a wrap because everywhere you drive and every person you pass, every person that passes your vehicle when it's parked, everybody will see that. It's it's an advertisement that people cannot look away from if it's done right. If it's done poorly, it's kind of actually easy to, to look past it just because uh, it's more um, annoying looking. But if it's done right, it's a huge, huge advertising. Now, this doesn't mean a full vehicle wrap, um, even though that's what I prefer personally. But if you do uh, multicolor vinyl, um, if you do any type of interesting things, even in a single color, we had trucks that were single color, but we did like giant pieces where they like over wrapped the, the cabs and stuff. So it looked like a wrap vehicle, even though it was single color vinyl. Um, we did those. Um, it just doesn't matter what you do, just kind of put it in, do a wrap, make it simple, make it something that people can read, and don't advertise every service you offer. A lot of times people want to take a wrap, put it on there and go, you know, XYZ window cleaning, window cleaning, pressure washing, house washing, uh, roof cleaning, gutter cleaning, you know, sidewalks, well, no one's reading that. No one's reading that. And you're not selling anybody on the last item that's on that list. You're just not. No one got there, right? What you want to do is have something or your main bread and butter as your main service. And that's what it is. You can even put on there that you do more, but just don't write it down. Simple is better. A wrap is to catch the eye. The writing on the wrap is just to catch the people's interest, right? So a lot of times you can do a full wrap, nice color, but then have the words that stand out that say window cleaning, and it is the size of your vehicle, all the way from the front to the back, window cleaning. And then around that, phone, website. You're like, well, yeah, but I also do pressure. Yes, I know. But you're not catching people. If they see a big thing that says window cleaning, it gets them, they're, they're catching their eye, right? If you put that on there and it says window cleaning in big letters, you can't then put window cleaning and pressure washing because they've already seen window cleaning. That's what triggered them. So stick to one. Don't sell to everybody like that. When they call you, now it's your time to sell to everybody, right? So once you put a uh, the information you want people to actually see and read on there, then when they call you, let them know everything else you say everything else you sell. A big thing that you have to remember too when you're selling services um, is people don't listen to what they don't need. So if I tell you all the services I need right now, what your brain picks out is the one that you need or you think you want. The stuff that you have no, like if I'm like, I detail Ferraris and blah, 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 blah. Like you probably think that's kind of interesting, but you're like, well, that doesn't stick in my brain because I don't need that. I don't feel like I'll ever need that, right? Same thing with services. As you sell your services, they're only seeing what they need. So bring them in with the main thing. You know, I'm touching the most people with this one phrase or this one service. And then upsell them on everything else. Now, don't bait and switch. Sometimes when I say upsell, people get a little uh, flustered. <clears throat> it's not bait and switch. An upsell means that when somebody orders something, you say, would you like fries with that? That's an upsell. It's not a bait and switch. Bait and switch would be like, oh, you want window cleaning? Yeah, it's only a dollar a room. Dollar a window. And then they get there and be like, ah, but if you want the glass clean, uh, it's $10. That's a bait switch. So wrap it. That is the biggest do. It's the biggest return on money-wise. I mean, you're talking, say you spend $3,000 on a wrap. Like you went all out. $3,000 on a wrap. How long does it take you to get three grand back? How many customers would that be? So say your average ticket's 300 bucks. That's 10 customers. We're doing even numbers, obviously. You got more specific of a number than 300, but 300, $300, it's 10 customers. Do you think having a wrap on your vehicle for the foreseeable future will bring you 10 customers? Yeah. It'll probably bring you 10 customers in the first week that saw your van. 
Now, every customer from there is free. I mean, return on investment's huge on wraps. I know they're scary because of the price, but they're really, really worth it. So something to kind of think about. The first don't on the list of the uh, window cleaning work truck uh, do's and don'ts is uh, putting a printer or computer in your truck. Now, before you send me, <laughs> before you send me angry emails, and go ahead and do it if you want. It's jersey at windowcleaner.com. Send me all the angry emails you want. But, but um, with printers and computers and trucks, all you're doing is um, allowing somebody to potentially steal the stuff. There's no need ever for you to have a printer in your truck. It's just not. If for some reason, well, we print all of our invoices the day before so that they're all ready to go in envelopes the day of. So when we get to service, we go, okay, job one is, here's the address, it's all written on the envelope, boom, everything's in there, it's already printed. I go to the job with the printed stuff. If you're not preparing yourself, if you're not prepared, then you might need a printer in your truck, but it's a bad idea. I know people, there's this big uh, push to kind of get people to give a printer right away. And, and then they were like, well, when I do bids, you know, I, I, I print everything up and people really like that. And okay, but I do all my bids over the phone. That's the truth. Like 99.99% of the bids that we do for window cleanings all over the phone every single time. I do not go and do bids. I haven't done an in-person bid in the probably five years before I sold my company, probably maybe even longer than that. The only time I do a bid is if somebody's got a really, really non, very custom home, um, a very big home over a certain size, things like that, because then I can kind of get a better feel in person, but for everything, my normal bread and butter, and probably your bread and butter, is gonna be the um, um, cookie cutter style, right? Anywhere from like 2,000 to 3,000, 3,500 square feet. Those, you know what they look like. You know the type of windows. A couple questions here and there, you know exactly what the house is. Like with experience, you kind of know, right? So there's no need that I'd ever need a printer. If somebody gets an invoice and it's wrong, okay, I'll just send them a new one, right? Everything you have is on your phone for software. I don't know what you're using. Let me rephrase that. Everything that you probably have software-wise is on your phone. If you're running QuickBooks, there's the mobile version. If you're running a customer factor, mobile version. If you're running anything, you have a mobile version. If you're running Responsibit, which by the way, uh, Responsibit's pretty rad, right? If you're running that type of thing and it's on your phone, what do you do? Oh, yep, let me get that to you right now. Let me, uh, boom, all right. So you have that email now in your, I don't have to print anything, I just sent it. If you're printing stuff in your truck, it just clutters the truck and it just, I don't know. I, I just don't see a benefit of having that. And a lot of times people really, really want to push that side of it to put it in the truck. It doesn't much make sense. So if I'm wrong, go to YouTube, search out this video. This is the uh, do's and don't window uh, work truck window. I don't know what they're going to word it on the thing, but it should be like uh, uh, window cleaning work truck do's and don'ts. Find this episode if you're not watching it on YouTube. By the way, if you're on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. But um, do all of that and um, tell me if you like a printer and why. Because I've just never been sold on it. Uh, another do, and this one is pretty much free, is clean your truck. You would absolutely be astonished by how many people have dirty work trucks. How many people have trucks, work trucks, that just are dumpsters? Don't drive a dumpster. You have to clean your truck, right? If you clean your truck, you show people that your truck is clean, right? The big thing with um, uh, work trucks in general is that if I see somebody show up in a dumpster, right? You've seen it. The windshield's all covered with stuff. I, by the way, hate my pet peeve. And I'm just some guy. It doesn't matter what I say, right? But I hate any work truck I ever see with one piece of paper on the dash drives me bonkers. And there's people that just, that's all they, they keep all their garbage on the, it drives me nuts. Don't be that guy. Don't be the person when you show up to the house and the homeowner's standing there waving to you as you pull in their driveway, you open the door and there's cans and bottles and spit jugs and 
and pee bottles and garbage and McDonald's coming out and you're picking the stuff up and put it back in the car. If you can't keep your truck clean, you're not going to come clean my windows, right? There's a big thing with that, that, that we are a cleaning service, so we have to be clean. It's like showing up to somebody and just like ripped up faded gross shirts, right? If you do that, people go, well, this guy can't even keep up himself, right? So do clean your vehicle. The inside, vac it out. The outside, wash it. What does it cost to go through a car wash? 10 bucks? That's like the fancy deluxe. Like go through and get the regular basic wash. It's like five bucks when you get gas if you're at a gas station, right? Or do the one that you spray yourself. Or if you uh, even are like, dude, I don't have five bucks. Go to your own house. Use your own tap water and your own spigot. It takes some time, but do it, right? You're conveying this image. That's the big thing with anybody who drives fleet in general is that it has to be clean and look nice. It's the first impression, really. Just like you are your first impression, the first impression of your vehicle always uh, conveys what you want it to convey. That makes sense. So clean the vehicle. Um, I did something cool, by the way. If you're not following me on any of the platforms, uh, we started uh, TikTok now, which, by the way, uh, find me on TikTok. That would be rad. TikTok's new and uh, I'm not a huge, I mean, I'm not used to it yet, I guess. But we're doing TikTok tips. Uh, we do uh, Facebook lives. Uh, we do posts, daily posts, pro window cleaning and uh, uh, window cleaner. Um, I'm sorry, WCR Nation uh, Facebook page, right? We do content everywhere everywhere so check out the content there um, but one of the things we did was a question we asked was show us your work truck i just want to see i love people's work trucks and everybody posted their work truck it was so awesome and everybody posted pictures they were clean they were like sexy they were you know the wheels were done up the the a lot of times you understand the value of having good looking pictures a good looking work truck the problem is once we start doing the work Certain things fall back. I don't have the time to do. I don't have the time. Don't forget to clean the work truck because that is your driving rolling billboard like we talked about. So definitely do that. Uh, the next big don't is let your work trucks break down. Now, a lot of you are like, well, this guy's an idiot. Duh. Nobody's letting their work. Okay. If you're not doing oil changes right, if you're letting rust get out of control, if you're not changing the brakes when they need to, if you're just not doing full inspections, if you're not going through the uh, opening the hood and checking that, if you're not going through your coolant levels and flushing thing, if you're not overly maintaining your vehicle, it will break down. Or at least it will have the possibility to break down. Think about this. Let's let's look at this the other way because I know on our side, if, if I had a truck and it broke down, in my brain, I'm like, oh, man, yeah, you know, this thing runs eight hours a day. Like, it's bound to happen, right? It makes sense to us because we're the ones with the truck. Imagine if you paid hundreds of dollars to have a luxury service. The guy showed up and their truck broke down in your driveway. What if the truck leaked oil in your driveway? I'd be like, what is this? I just paid this guy how much money and he can't even pay to fix his trucks? Understand that your truck, in cleaning it, in wrapping it, in maintaining it, that is a big part. We drive our offices to the people's house. Pretty much, right? Same thing with gear, right? We wouldn't use equipment that's going to break. Or we wouldn't, you know, if something starts to crack and stuff, we're not going to be like, we'll still use it. And then you show up to a job and it breaks and it's your fault. Same thing with trucks. you got to maintain the trucks. And I know... It's not fun, it's not glamorous, no one sees it, and it's an expense, but it's the bigger picture. Remember, the big thing we talk about on WCR Nation, the thing that you're just, in general, trying to do in your company, even if you're a one-man show, even if you're a one-man show, 10 people, million dollars, $100,000, doesn't matter, what you're trying to do is strengthen your company. That's the truth. The truth is you're building an empire, even if it's a size empire that you think it doesn't matter. The only way to do that is to get all facets of your company and make them awesome. 
A lot of times when you see work trucks, these are the guys that do uh, leasing too. There's leasing and fleet programs and things. The reason they do that is because they're always maintained. If you got only a couple years, vehicles are always new. They always look nice, right? It's worth it to people to do that because it's a rolling office. It's your rolling billboard. It's the first impression people see of you. If something ends up breaking down, the big problem then comes in is that you've lost that image with that person. Always. If I show up to somebody's house and I have dirty clothes, their instant impression that they'll always think of is that I have dirty clothes. You remember that kid in uh, middle school, high school, whatever? Think about it. We all got that kid or kids. There's always people who you're like, wow, that dude is so gross. Right? Oh, man, that guy's a jerk. You've only met him once. But his first impression with you stuck with you. It's the same thing where anything that's traumatic will always be more remembered than not. Think of Michael Jackson. You know what Michael Jackson was accused of. Never was proven that he did any of that. But do you know what he's approved? I don't even have to say it. You know what I'm talking about. What's Michael Jackson known for? And in your brain, you instantly think the worst. You don't think of him being one of the best-selling musicians of all time. One of the uh, richest portfolios of music of all time. You don't think of him being the guy who owns a bunch of Beatles, the rights to a bunch of Beatles songs. Or that he would uh, open up a uh, amusement facility for kids with cancer. That he allowed kids to come and just be kids for a little bit, even if they're dealing with awful things in their life. What you do remember is the bad stuff, right? People, Mike, talking about Michael Jackson, by the way, people would pass out and faint at his concerts, like regularly. They're so excited to see him. That was Michael Jackson, one of the biggest stars ever. And you know how that turned out. Right, So if your truck breaks down in somebody's driveway or you show up and there's garbage falling out of it and like I always say, you're driving a dumpster, that's what people remember. They don't remember that you were awesome. They don't remember how nice you were. They don't remember how well the windows were cleaned or the bargain they got or, or any of that. They don't remember that. They remember the bad because bad will always take precedence over good when it comes to memories a lot of times it's the same thing with you know when you talk marriage and stuff you could be married for 10 years and you remember the bad times of the marriage not the other nine years of the good times it's really hard to focus on the good when the bad is such a feeling this all comes back to by the way i'm getting off track <laughs> this all goes back to uh when we were saying that um selling the biggest thing you can do is relieve someone's pain it's better than making somebody, uh, giving them pleasure. If I give you pleasure or I take away your pain, negative will always win. That's always a stronger thing like fear. Fear will always sell more than giving you pleasure. Oh, think about it. If you get your windows clean, oh, you'll look out the windows. It'll feel so good. You go, oh, that's nice. If you let us clean your windows, your husband will not fall off a ladder and die, leaving your entire family without a father. Oh, gosh. Do you feel that? that? Well, that hit a lot different than this good feeling. Always, right? Don't be that. Remember that. Everything you do always comes back to the same simple principles. Don't let your truck break down. Don't, you know, don't let it get that bad. Anyway, okay. I digress. Next one. <laughs> do, do make it awesome. So, do take your truck, your van, your whatever, and add on the things that you think will help. So I love an ARE cap, right? On a pickup truck, the ones that have, you remove the tailgate and it's a big double door. On the back, lockable sides. And then um, there is, a, oh, no, I can't remember. Anyway, there's a bunch of them. But ladder um, uh, racks that you slide the ladder on. Boom, it hits kind of the end, and you just flip up a lever, lever. Boom, locks. If you want to put a padlock on, put a padlock on. I don't have to strap a ladder down. 
I don't have to uh, worry about it falling out. It's impossible. They're all adjustable. You adjust it to the ladders you're going to have on there. If you're bringing ladders in general, so awesome. Have PVC with the caps on it for your water fit poles. By the way, simple tip, put foam in the ends of your PVC. That way that when you put the cap on, there's foam in there. And in the very end, there's foam in there. So when you put your water fit poles in there, if the poles are relatively the long, same size, they will kind of wedge in so that they don't slide. And then if they do slide, if they're smaller ones, then they don't hit the end and take a big uh, hit. Put it in PVC. You can actually get PVC pieces like that with the caps that lock. Now, if somebody wants to get in, just like anything, they'll get in, but it keeps honest people honest, right? Make it your own. Get lockable bins, right? If you're a running a pickup truck with no cap, maybe you want to put a toolbox in the back. Make it lockable. Make it so you have stuff with you. Deck out your vehicle because it is your work truck. All my work trucks all had uh, bins also inside the front cab. Uh, we had, um, they're like the uh, slots, that you like a mail slot that you have like on the outside of a door. You put it in so you can hold stuff. We had those in our truck so that uh, whenever we had our binders and papers and documents, they were all right there. Every work truck had like a bin of that stuff where you could just open it and all the documents were there. So that if somebody's like, hey, do you have, excuse me, do you have a business card? I just got a random hiccup. You could be like, yeah, let me grab that for you. Grab it. You know exactly where it is, right? Make the truck your own. Make the truck your own. Um, the big thing that people do is um, they get a truck and then they slowly do it. They buy like Tupperware, right? Which kind of work for now. And then they realize that's not really permanent. They do the next thing, they do the next thing. And then all of a sudden they get it. Just go with what you want right away. Go with what you want right away. That's the big thing that you always take away from, from all of this. <clears throat> with, with, with vehicles in general, other than the impression side, I always consider it an office. Um, I always get a vehicle that has a wide center console and every vehicle has the same GPS setup has the same um, bins, has the same anything. When you get into a vehicle, I know exactly where everything is and everyone's set up because it's an office. It's an office. You get to go bring it to somebody's place, their house, and it gets to be used. You know, it, it brings you your equipment and it's the thing you're in most. It's like these people who buy these office chairs. You go, man, you spent $800 on an office chair? And you go, yeah, I'm in the office chair all the time. I spend $3,000 on a computer, and I'm at the computer the same amount of time I'm at my office chair. Which, by the way, I, I have a stand-up desk. I don't know if anybody else does or not. But, uh, yeah. So, the, the last don't. The last don't. Because what we talk about in vehicles... Everybody looks at somebody else's stuff. So the last don't in a work vehicle is don't compare yourself to somebody else's rig. And the reason is, is that people will look at it and go, oh man, ah, you got a trailer? Ah, oh, I, I would love a trailer. Well, do you need a trailer or do you want that? You know, everybody has different things in their businesses, right? Vans work for some people. If you don't have a lockable storage your vehicles get parked into, get a van because now your whole thing is a storage unit, right? If you got tons of gear and you want to have a screening table maybe set up, maybe you want a trailer. There's downsides to a trailer because now you have to tow it, back it in, all that fun stuff, right? Pickup trucks, do you need two-wheel drive, roll-up windows, four-wheel drive? This guy's got leather and everything in his vehicle. I should have that. Well, maybe that's his only work truck. Maybe that's his only truck in general, that's his personal truck, right? So don't compare yourself and situation to somebody else. Now, if you see somebody like, dude, that would work perfect for what I need, that's different. A lot of people out there have spent a lot of time, a lot of time on their vehicles, and they made them really, really good. I love the wraps that are out there. I love the vehicle layouts. I love all of that stuff. So if you haven't checked out that post, uh, just search in like pro window cleaning on Facebook. Um, just search post by me, I guess, but, uh, yeah, work trucks. I guess I don't know how to search 
anyway, whatever. It's there. It's a daily question. Uh, it was the other day. Um, and there's just tons and tons of pictures. So either way, don't compare yourself to somebody else unless it works for you. But I just want to say thank you guys for watching as always. And like I said, we're trying to do more content, especially going into winter. So follow us everywhere you can. Uh, even if you're not listening to everything that we put out, um, I say we, but it's me, you know, follow me, check it out. Uh, Facebook, uh, I have a page there, Instagram, I have, um, the TikTok is the new one. It's what the kids do, man. No, I'm not dancing. There's a lot of business stuff on there, but either way, another thing, if you really want to, uh, do me the, the, the greatest, awesomest favor ever and just be like a cool thank you. This American Window Cleaning Magazine. I talk about this because this is awesome. I love this thing. I love the magazine. Obviously, that's why I bought it. But the magazine itself has been around since 1986. Articles, some amazing journalists, super cool pictures. If you guys got pictures, send them in, by the way. Plus, you get a sticker sheet every single month, and it helps me out. I want to build a magazine to, like, really large levels in the window cleaning world. I think that would be so rad. Uh, I get excited about it. I'm sorry. But anyway, go to AWCMAG for that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm a rep. Windowcleaner.com. Please let me be your rep. 862-312-2026. That's my number. It's a cell. Shoot me a message. Make my day. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So either way, next until next week, uh, get yourself a nice work truck. Work on it if you can or need to. But more importantly, go out there and be epic. <laughs>